All right, welcome. Thank you, everyone. It's a great day on the hilltop. If we could all be seated and we'll get started in a moment. I'm losing my main man. <laughs> All right, here we go. Thank you everyone for being here for our introductory press conference of head coach Ed Cooley. And I'd like to take this moment to introduce Lee Reed to get things started. Thank you. Thank you, Diana. Uh, Hoya Saxa, huh? How about that? So it's a great day. It's a great day to be a Hoya. Uh, Thank you all for attending. Today we usher in a new era of Georgetown men's basketball. I am excited to welcome Ed Cooley and his family to the Hilltop. Coach Cooley comes to us with not only an incredible wealth of basketball knowledge, but as a leader, a teacher, and a mentor. He has a proven record of success, and we are ecstatic that he now wears the blue and gray. I'd like to now welcome President DeJoya for his comments. Thanks very much, Lee. Good afternoon and welcome, everyone. It's great to be here with all of you. And as, as Lee has just shared, this, this afternoon we have the privilege of formally welcoming our new head men's basketball coach to Georgetown, Ed Cooley. And we are excited about the future of Georgetown basketball under Coach Cooley's leadership. The 2022 Naismith Men's Coach of the Year Ed brings 17 years of experience as a head coach and a deep commitment to excellence. Ed's a builder, he builds teams, he builds community, he understands what it means for a team to be successful on the court, and most importantly, the role that athletics can play in the formation of the young men on his team. Ed has seen great success as a coach, seven NCAA tournament appearances in the past nine tournaments, a Big East tournament title in 2014, and last year he led Providence to their first Big East regular season title and a tri trip to the Sweet 16. He has demonstrated his ability to navigate the changing dynamics within college basketball and remain focused on the development of his team as students and as athletes. This is an important moment for our community and for Georgetown basketball a new chapter. We believe his vision, determination, and experience will uplift and restore this team and enable Georgetown basketball to compete at the highest levels. We have great confidence in Ed and in the potential for our program in the years ahead. Ed, we've been grateful to count on you and Norris and your family, Olivia and Isaiah, as members of this community. And it's a tremendous privilege now to welcome you as our head men's basketball coach and to see all that you will enable our team to accomplish in the years ahead. As I welcome Lee Reed back to the podium, I'd like to express my deep gratitude to him for his leadership of our athletics program, for his contributions as we take this next step for Georgetown basketball. Lee. Thank you, President DeJoya. Again, I'd like to welcome Coach Cooley, Norris, Isaiah, and Olivia to the Hoya family. We're delighted to have you here. As we began this process, Coach Cooley quickly emerged as our leading candidate. We knew we needed a leader, someone who understood our identity and could reimagine Georgetown basketball to fit today's unique basketball landscape. Coach Cooley has a vision for our program on the court, in the classroom, and in the community. He also possesses the ability to set standards for these young men guided by our Jesuit values. I am certain he will quickly ingrain himself into the Georgetown community, showing his passion, he has a lot of that, drive and determination to build a championship level program. I am deeply appreciative to the many people who assisted us in this process. First and foremost, to our current men's basketball student athletes. We appreciate you entrusting us with such a monumental task in your basketball careers. To President DeJoya, 
university administration, board of directors, turnkey, and our athletic staff. Thank you for your partnership during this process, for your commitment to Georgetown basketball, and to helping us revitalize this proud, tradition-rich program. And finally, to our fans, our students, our alumni, our band, our cheerleaders, Hoya Blue, and the Hoya Hoop Club, and all of Hoya Nation, thank you for your continued support. Make no mistake, we will forever respect our history, but Coach Cooley is a major step toward our future. I am confident that with his drive and vision, we will recapture the excitement and success that this community deserves. I'd like to formally welcome new head men's basketball coach for the Georgetown Hoyas, Ed Cooley. amazing to be here and I appreciate it. If we have any of our former players that are here, we wouldn't be here without you. So if any of our former players here, somebody could just make an aisle for them to come right here because we ain't here without you. But if any of the former players are here, please. they've earned the right to stand right here. This has been an incredible journey so far. And Jack, Lee, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come be with my daughter, <laughs> who, is a, who is a Hoya, right? Sharon, uh, you know, she's here. And one of, my, one of my favorite people that I met at Georgetown through our meetings down in Ponte Vedra. I want to welcome my wife. I want to welcome my son, Valentina. Ivan Thomas, who's here, Dennis Coleman of Ropes and Gray, who's the best attorney in America, so I appreciate he and his wife. It's just an incredible feeling and a lot of emotion right now. And I'm not good from speaking off of cards, but there's so many things that I have to remember. And there's so many things that I was thinking about on the flight coming in today. And for me, this is about people. This is about purpose. This is about friendships. And as I look around here, I see some of my friends from college. I see coaches that were at other schools, neighbors, relationships that go beyond the game of basketball. And that's what we want to try to do here. We're going to win games. I promise you we're going to win games. We're not going to win a little. We're going to win a lot. You understand that? The reason you bring these players up here is because this is a player's game. And when I had the opportunity to get into coaching some years ago as a Division III volunteer coach, and then going to Stonehill College Division II coach, it was all about the players. In those volunteer days, those Division II days, the restricted earning days at the University of Rhode Island, to Boston College, the other Jesuit school, to the other Jesuit school that's called Fairfield, I couldn't be here at this podium today without players because you're not at this podium if you're not successful. You're not at this po a podium if you didn't have players that you loved, mentored, and guided. So this to the players that we left at Providence College. It was going to take a very, very special place for me to leave home. Home. And it is hard. Yet, purpose, change, time, Purpose. There's a purpose for us to be here. It's the right time. And it was hard. I tell you, it was hard. 12 years at a school where you grew up, 12 years at a, at a place that you took from the bottom, 12 years to build a championship top 20 program year in and year out. And I owe it to all the former players, the GAs, 
the coaches, the administrators. Ken Sicard and Steve Napolillo, who was the athletic director there, Ken Sicard was the president. That was one of the hardest conversations I have had to talk about, I'm talking about leaving to go to an interconference team. So if any of you can just sit in my skin for 48 hours and know how hard that was, it had to take a really special place. But they brought me to my baby. They had no idea that was the key. <laughs> that was the key to this whole deal. So to see Olivia smiling and she's going to graduate in May, and I, don't, I didn't even write that down, <laughs> right? But this is a new era. This is. This is an era where this district, this DMV area, I promise you we need to lock this down. We need to make sure. We need to make sure. Not the best players, the best people that are good players, that have incredible integrity, that have character, that have passion, that have a chip on their shoulder to want to be a champion. Listen, I'm a dreamer and a believer, right? Everybody looks at you, coach. No, my name's Ed. I just happen to be a coach. But the Ed in me wants to be a champion. And I think we chose, together as a partnership, a championship level program. I remember going back to 1982, 83, 84, 85, Dick Emberg, Joe McGuire, they would be on television, St. John's would be playing Georgetown, and I saw this imposing figure. Man, respect and tradition and legacy is something that I dreamed about. And I had an opportunity to meet Coach Thompson. Practiced at Central High School, I couldn't believe he allowed me to sit and practice. And his language was colorful. <laughs> I was in awe seeing size, length, strength, athleticism. Why do I bring up Coach Thompson, Coach Raveling, Coach Cheney? They were black coaches that we in the inner city, that was our hope, that was our dream. I said one day, man, I want to be like that dude. I don't know if I can use that vocabulary, but I can use <laughs> I want to be that dude. Lo and behold, you fast forward that I remember, and you was in the game, Jeff, when we played Fairfield played Fairfield. He was really good that game, too. <laughs> and I remember Coach Thompson, we played here, that is now Capital One Arena, and he said, you won't be there long, boy. I'm like, okay, what job am I getting? Because I got a good one right here. I bring up Coach Thompson's name. First and foremost, I'm not him. I don't want to be him. But I respect the platform he gave all of us young believers that had a bowl of hope, a bowl of hope and a dream, and that's all I wanted. Opportunity knocks, and when opportunity knocks, don't ask who's at the door. Opportunity's there. Break it down and become special, and that's what we're gonna be here. We're not gonna be good, we're gonna be special. And that specialty is gonna come from our alumni, our fan base, our season ticket holders, our former players, which I'm really, really big on, a lot of the times, coaches take jobs and they forget about the young men that got them there. There's a history here, there's a tradition here that I think you have to respect. But it is a new era. And it's the blossom season. We're about to blossom as big as anything in America. <laughs> I can promise you that. And it's not gonna be easy. We are, we are navigating uh, ever-moving landscape in college athletics. And we're not gonna complain about it. We're going to adjust, we're going to adapt, and we're going to become champions, because I think it's important for us to understand that. As I'm looking down this here, and I can't see because I don't have glasses on and I'm blind as hell, <laughs> the commitment to excellence is just not on the court, it's in the classroom. And for all of you, get ready. I'm super inclusive. I want to meet you. I want to know your name. I want to know your neighbor's name. I want to be in the cafeteria. I want you to come to a practice. I want you to see and evolve with us from day one, because we can't do it alone. We need Capital One Arena to become the spot. Not just an arena, the spot. So we need every student, every alumni, every former player, every business. I promise you, people are going to want to wear this G more than they've ever wanted to wear it in their life. We're going to make this G special once again. We'll respect legacy. We'll respect tradition. But man, as you can feel from the passion that's running through my veins right now, I feel like playing right now. I feel like going out and recruit right now. I feel like asking people for money right now. 
right? We want to create a culture that is just not inclusive, but when people look at us, they envy us because we have pride. We have integrity. We do things the right way. We say please. We say thank you. We have an attitude of gratitude, appreciation, and that goes a long way. I need people to see our student athletes, not as players, but as people that they say, damn, I can hire that man. How we walk, how we talk, how we engage. Open doors for people. That to me is just civility. And anytime you have that, people want to come see you. We talk about the spot. That's what we have to make our building. And we need everybody in here to give us a chance. And the word patience is always hard because everybody wants it and they want it right now. And this world of, I don't know, social media, Facebook, fat book, I don't know what the hell it's called. <laughs> everybody wants it right now. Have a little bit of patience, right? Rome wasn't built in a day, as we always say, but it was built. It was a little bit at a time, a little bit of luck, a couple of great players. You guys got any kids? <laughs> Are they good? Getting there. Yep. His kid ain't good. <laughs> His kid ain't good. When we build this identity, this identity will be about all of us, not just the basketball team. An identity and a culture of appreciation and gratitude, and that ethos that ethos that I truly, truly believe in. Relationships that are deeper than the game. So when people see you, they don't see Coach Cooley, they see Ed. Coach is just my job. That many people think they can do. That many people have opinions on. When you're not in the grind, and the recruiting, the parenting, the mentoring, that's what we do. Our staff will be a staff that develop men of high character. And for those that need some help, a second, a third chance. You can't just kick those kids away, because that kid was me. That kid was many of us that didn't have much, but we had that bowl of hope. And the acronym for hope is helping other people excel. Make it about the other person, never about yourself. When you do that, your life is fulfilled. So we talk to our players about it's not about you. The world of me ends in losses. The world of we create championships. The world of us creates an incredible opportunity of dreaming big and dreaming to do things at a high, high level. I'm so excited to be here. I'm telling you, this place is special. It has an it factor. And everybody says, what is it? Don't know, but it's here. <laughs> and you can feel it in the room. You can smell it in the room. You can touch it in the room. We have an opportunity to make this Hoya Nation special, and we want to put our handprints all over it, not just in the basketball court, but in an entire district, an entire DMV area. So we want high school coaches, AAU coaches, believers, and people to give us a chance to coach their kids. And you don't have to be the best player. You have to be a good person. If you happen to be a good player, we want you. But we will not not go see you because you can't play for us. You may be able to play for somebody that we met. It could be a Division II school, a Division III school, an NIA school, a junior college. we got to continue to promote education. This is the third Jesuit school I've worked at. 27 of my 29 years in college coaching has been at a Catholic institution. So I get it. I'm, I may be from the north and talk funny, but we're going to work our ass off. Nobody will outwork this group. Nobody. There won't be one staff in a country that will outwork the staff that's about to arrive on the hill. I can tell you that. If they do, we'll have new staff members. We need energy. That's the truth. We need energy, passion, enthusiasm. And remember, we are inclusive. If you see me on campus, introduce yourself. Right? Don't be afraid. Grow up. Say hello. No, grow up. Because you're going to have to go get a job, just like I just did with my new bosses. Hey, Lee, Ed Cooley, good to meet you. <laughs> You'll be amazed when they see you the person, how powerful that is, when they see you the people. And as we close this up, and I see many of my family members here, many of my friends, the media people that are here, we need each and every one of you to trust 
We need each and every one of you to believe. We need each and every one of you not to be negative about what happened yesterday. That's in the past. What are we today? Where are we going tomorrow? And I need you to envision from our former players to our current players to our future players having a net around our neck. Here in that one shining moment, Jim Nance ain't going to be there anymore as he's retiring this year. He was one of the best guys to never be around. But Iron Eagle is going to be talking to me at some point really, really soon when Georgetown wins a national championship. I can really believe that. I'd be remiss if we didn't wish our brethren in the Big East luck as three teams are in the Sweet 16, Xavier, Creighton, and UConn. Can't believe I'm saying that, but I'm saying it. <laughs> hey, we got to be good teammates, right? They're part of the Big East family. We got to wish them luck because when they win, we win, right? And I'm hoping on this day next year, somebody else is wishing the Hoyas good luck in the round of 16 to the Elite Eight, to the Final Four, to the semifinal, to a championship opportunity. Just give us an opportunity. That's all we're looking for. I appreciate everybody for coming today. God bless each and every one of you, and go Hoyas. What's up, man? Boxing. I guess I'll call you Ed. That's okay. I love that. Ed is a way better guy than Coach Cooley. <laughs> um, you just mentioned about your staff that's going to come in here. Have you had a chance to finalize? And are people coming from Providence? You know, loyalty goes a long way, right? I'm pretty sure we're going to have some familiar faces that sit next to me. They're trying to go through their process. This, this happened quick, and what I appreciate about President DeJoy and Lee, we had to wait to the end before I was able to be contacted. And then given the, our staff that information in 24 hours, uh, 36 hours, um, we're evaluating it. But uh, I anticipate us having uh, the same crew that got us here. So I appreciate the question. And, and then just also, I know it's been so fast. Have you had a chance to meet with the current Hoyas and do any of them sort of factor in your vision going forward, the current players? I did have an opportunity to talk to them. It was brief. I'll have a chance to talk to them one-on-one -on -one <laughs> and see if our personalities match. I want somebody who wants to be here. I'm not going to beg you to stay. You want to roll, roll. We'll figure it out. All right, next we're going to go to Gene Long with the Washington Post. Hi, Gene. Ed, uh, welcome to D.C. Um, Thank you. So you asked this in your opening remarks, right over here to your left. Okay, Matt. Um, how does your vision and your plan for the Hoyas um, align with uh, preserving the tradition set by and legacy of John Thompson while allowing you to forge your own path as a coach? That's a lot packed into that question. I think you, um, I think you always have to respect tradition. You have to respect past players, past administrations. The legacy is it, you know what I mean? You're not, you're not gonna run from it. But I'm not John. Don't wanna be John. I wanna be Ed. And Ed is a totally different animal. And I don't, you know, some of that language will come out because I learned from him. <laughs> so watch out. Ed, to your, to your right, right next to Bobby. Um, you mentioned obviously three teams in the Big East in the Sweet 16. What is kind of the path forward for Georgetown and you guys to get back into that kind of contention? Like what are the steps that you guys need to do as a program to be at the top of the Big East again? Well, first and foremost, I need to learn what this area is about. Um, you have to find student athletes that fit the way you want to play, uh, your style of play um, that fit you as a coach. We need to find players that can play for me, that can attend Georgetown, not the other way around. Uh, you know, it's going to take kids that normally play for me are tough, unselfish, committed to excellence, want to graduate, um, got to get a little lucky. You got to keep the best players in the region. 
that's going to create energy and opportunity, not just for them, but for future young men that may want to come here. Uh, you gotta, again, it's a process. Uh, and the process now, because you have a changing landscape in athletics, you'll have an opportunity to probably move it quicker than you have, would have been 10, 20 years ago. Is there a water over there, babe? Yeah, thank you. Ed uh, Barry Sperluger from the hey, Washington Post. Hey, Barry, how you doing, babe? Great, man. How are you? Um, I like your hair. You got a lot of you got a lot of gel in thank there. Thank you. Yeah, appreciate that. Uh, you had, you know the coach up the road in College Park pretty well from over the years. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, we've battled a lot. Would you entertain um, playing a series with Maryland? Yeah, you know, we'll, uh, Kevin and I will talk about it. If it's good for the DMV area, good for the district, but more importantly, if it's good for us, I'm not just playing because you're up the street. It's got to have a purpose for Georgetown. You know, we'll have a conversation, a possibility to do it, right? But I won't rule it out. I don't know what our scheduling alliances are here. You know, when you take a job, scheduling is one of the first things you talk about. Then recruiting. Scheduling and recruiting are, are, are very, very important. So Kevin and I will have a great conversation. Hey, Matt Paris from the Washington Times. Nice to meet you. Nice to um, meet you as well. You mentioned a little bit about reimagining kind of where do you assess this, this current program of where it is and, and what it kind of everything that you guys need to overcome to get back to the top? I'm not someone that lives in a what if world. It is what it is. We're going to move forward. I don't even know how to answer that. You know, I don't have anything to do with what happened yesterday. My job is to move us forward from today and I'm going to need your help and I'm going to need the help of all the writers of all the media outlets to give us a chance and give these kids an opportunity to grow and develop. We can't win without your positive message. We only go backwards if it's a negative message. I'm asking you as the head coach to give us a chance, get to know us before you have your humble opinions that we appreciate. But many of you, many of you behind the cameras and behind the pens, I'd love to see you coaching the Big East game. <laughs> Hey, hey, Ron, what's how up, you baby? How you doing? Nice to see you as well. Talk about your assessment process. You got to come in, you got to see what might work for you and what won't, won't, won't and make changes. Just talk about generally how do you come into a new organization and make those necessary changes. I meet the people first. I meet the people who impact the players on campus, whether it's public safety, whether it's the people that feed our men, where they sleep, who they interact with. You got to get to know the people that impact your players. Then you meet the players. Then you assess their academics. You assess their ability. Then you ask them if they want to be here. Do they have a habit of everyday people? Um, there's a lot of assessment that goes into it. And then you got to go out and recruit what you need. So, you know, there's, there's a plan in place for sure. Hi, Coach. Uh, this is Rochelle with the Hoya, uh, Georgetown student newspaper. Um, just wanted to ask a bit about money. You mentioned that money played a, a, a small factor in the decision, if any. Um, to what extent did the NIL program at Georgetown and trying to create an NIL program factor into the decision? And what do you hope to use NIL for um, to build this program? That's the, probably the biggest change, skip, uh, change in, in the college landscape, that and transferring. We will be very aggressive with it yet at the same time educating our kids, because not many young men understand what is money, the impact it has on you, the tax ramifications, so we need financial awareness, we need financial stability with their minds. Um, I think we're gonna be one of the leaders in it, and at the end of the day, everybody will be treated fair. In life, not everything's equal. Just like I ask, I'm gonna ask you, how good are you? That'll tell me what your NIL opportunities could be. Image and likeness is not on the coach. Image and likeness is on companies. What's your bottom line to that company or representative that wants to sponsor you, so to speak? It's just like in life, man. You're going to be a great writer one day. What is your image? What is your likeness? You're going to win a Pulitzer Prize one day, so keep doing it. Hi, Ed. Heather McDonough from NBC4. Welcome to Georgetown. Thank you. Was it almost, I don't want to sound corny, but fateful when this job, I mean, what happened so quickly? When the job opened, you had the connection with John Thompson, your daughter's here. Was Georgetown always in the back of your head? What, what was that like? NBC, 1981, 82, 83. 
That was in my head, dreaming, right? I told you, for me to leave my home that I was for 53 years, 53 years. Babe, I look good for 53, though. <laughs> I look damn good, shit. Yeah. Right? Um, you like that one? I do look good, though. Uh, no, uh, it was going to take a special place. And it is divine providence that I'm here. It's just meant to be, right? It's just, it's just that time, the change. I needed a change, but I wouldn't change unless the right place offered the opportunity. And it had to be a partnership and a marriage that would work. And I can see myself here for a really, really long time. Hey, Ed. Darren Haynes, WSA 9 CBS here in DC. Welcome to Georgetown. Thank you. Uh, just to kind of piggyback off of what she was saying, can you bring us to that moment, though, where you ultimately made that decision that you were going to come here and the emotions that you were feeling during that time? Fair question. Good question. Whew, uh, I had to ask myself, where do I want to go? You know, when you've been in a region and in an area your whole life, did you need something different? We feel we built an incredible organization from our crowds to our graduation of young men. I thought about being with my daughter more because I don't think my daughter is going back up to the Northeast, truly. And as, as, as you're growing up in our business and in, and in entertainment, and I think I've always been an incredible father, but I need to be a better dad. And I think being in the presence of my children more, I can be the dad I always wanted to be. And I didn't have that opportunity as you're trying to climb the ladder of growth and live in your dream. Little did you know you're missing all those little points with your kids. So that was a big factor. When Olivia said, Dad, I think I want to stay in the DMV area. It's, more, it's multicultural. Um, it's different. And I love it down here. And I think I could have a bigger impact on someone else's life. That's what I appreciate about Olivia so much. She cares about other people. And that's what it's about for me. And then when it came down to calling Lee and said, I'm your guy, it was a lot of soul searching on that because I had to say goodbye to a, to a home, to a region. That region built me. YMCA's, boys clubs. My lights didn't come on at night. There was no food in the refrigerator. There was no father figure. So when you start doing all that and trying to get back to and give back, I feel we can give back to the same communities here in this DMV area to give those young men and women that didn't have that thought they were left out. And I want to be a beacon of hope for those young men and women, not as a basketball coach, but as a human being. So that's what brought me to the point to come here. Hey, coach. Armin Hartini from Thompson. How would you say you're going to attack that problem and get more um, students to Capital One? Let me promise you this. My goal is to meet every single student on this campus. You will see me working out, uh, which I need to do more of. <laughs> I will be in our cafeterias. I will be checking classes, my players' classes. I will check. You'll see more of me than you've ever seen. It's so important for us, and I don't know what our overall enrollment is, but I'd like to have 80% of our students at every single home game and not make it the game, make it an event. I will meet with our support groups, our band, our cheerleaders, dancers. Can you dance for us, Lee? Can you dance? <laughs> not nah, Lee. Lee got a good one, two step. He's like the temptations, this guy here, right? One of the temptations. I, think, I just think engagement and inclusiveness is going to create an energy and an atmosphere here in Capital One Arena is going to be an incredible opportunity. And I tell our guys, when we play at home, you can't lose. When you play at home, I feel like and you lose, somebody broke in your home and took the last bowl of milk. And if you're hungry, you don't come from anything, let somebody try to come take my milk. They're going to come back with some knuckles. That's, we'll be good with the students. What do y'all students think? You got my back? Yeah. Good question. Great question. Final question, can I go to John Ed, 
uh, John Fanta from Fox Sports. I think I know exactly who you are. <laughs> you have said before that you're not on the sidelines if there's not John Thompson. Yes. When you walk inside this building today, he is always the first place person that you see. Could you have ever dreamed that a kid from Providence, Rhode Island, where, where you grew up, those roots, the, the tough upbringing that you've talked about, mm -hmm. would be standing here today following the footsteps of that man? I had to process that question. I really do. I appreciate that. Hmm. I can't dream about that. I don't even know if there's an answer to that. You know what? That's, that's a belief. That's a higher power that got me here. The fact that I can even call a timeout is a dream. The fact that my daughter is here is a dream. Ooh. That is a really hard question. But it also tells you when opportunity knocks, don't ask who it is. Meet people. Tell people you want to be a head coach. Be authentic. Be real. Have sympathy. Have empathy. I never thought in a million years I even coach. I never thought in a million years I go to college, graduate from high school. Growing up to me was survival. Growing up to me was asking somebody if they can buy me some spam. You young kids in here don't even know what spam is. <laughs> but those of you that are laughing, you know what it is. You know when you had to put it in the rice. I'm incredibly grateful for every opportunity that's ever been given. I'm far from perfect, far from perfect. All I'm asking this community to do is give us an opportunity to grow, develop, trust. We're going to lose some games. It's OK. Losing's part of growth. But over the course of time, it will pay off. And the dreams do come true. It was a dream of mine to be here, a dream. And it all started because somebody looked like me spoke like me and was big like me. That's what gave me the opportunity to be here today. I appreciate everybody for coming today. I would love to see all of you. We want 20,000 people a game at Capital One Arena. It's going to take some time. But if you dream, you dream big, and you trust, and you give, and you evaluate, anything's possible. If I'm the head coach at Georgetown, anything's possible. And I need you all to trust that. God bless you all, and thank you very much.